Today we're going to be looking at the SPL Graph application by Studio 6 Digital and we're going to have a look at what this app does and how it works. SPL Graph is conceptually a very simple application. Basically it's an SPL meter that is set up to record graphically the SPL level over time and then also uh, come up with an overall average of that SPL level. Before starting an SPL graph, you can select the weighting you like by touching this button here. Everything from unweighted, A, C, or any of the standard octave band filters. All these filters meet uh, ANSI type 1 or better. Running the app is very simple. Just touch the record button, the red button there, to start the graph running. And basically what it's going to do is every second it's going to draw a new point which is the average SPL over the last second. And it's building up a graph there for us. You can see it running. Um, this has all the normal uh, graphical user interface controls. We can scroll the graph up or down. We can expand or contract it with a pinch or stretch movement. And we have a cursor we can drag across. And you notice the cursor um, time stamps its location. So you're able to see exactly what time a sound happened. If we scroll the graph there, if I'm quiet for a second, there'll be a, a quiet point shown. And then when I start talking again, it starts showing the higher SPL level at that time. And notice as we hit the end of the graph, it automatically will add another minute onto the graph and uh, compress the time scale. Um, after we get some time on there, we can use the expand horizontal motion and open up the graph resolution to look back at any second over the entire graph. SPL Graph will store up to 24 hours of data with one second resolution. So even if we fill this whole graph up to 24 hours, we can go back and zoom in to any second in that time period and see what was happening at that time. Also, you see we compute an overall LEQ level, and in case you're not familiar with that term, that's just a term that means basically an, um, an algebraically averaged SPL. So it's kind of thinking of it as average SPL over the entire time. Right now I'm sitting at 57.6, so I had some time I was around 60, some time I was much lower, but that's the overall LEQ. Once we've done our SPL graph, we can save it by touching the Save Recall button and getting to the Save Recall page. And you notice here there's 10 spaces to save graphs. If there's nothing there, these fields will appear blank. If there's something there, you'll see both a text information if it was entered, date and time of the start of the graph, and the size of the audio file, which we'll get to that in a minute. For the moment, we've had audio turned off. Let's say we want to save this graph. We just hit the Store button and it saves it in there and you know if I wanted to before I stored it or even now I could enter some information here about uh, you know what this graph means to me go ahead and save that in there and then as we scroll through these different fields we can see uh, you know what they were stored as and of course once we've stored a graph we can bring it back up to the screen and look at it and analyze it on the screen and see what happened. So now we're going to have a look at the audio recording option. And the way this works, you just turn it on by flipping over the screen, turn on the recording option, and then come over to here. And now as I record the graph, you'll see the audio is also being stored with the graph at the same time. So there's a few seconds of audio. Let's go ahead and stop. And now when I play this graph back with the play button here, as I record the graph, I'm, you'll see the audio is also being stored. I'm talking the and graph at the same saying time. back exactly what I said. So there's a few seconds of audio. Let's go ahead and stop. With the graph. So that's a great feature because now not only do you have a record of the absolute level of the audio, but you have the actual audio as well. Let's look at bringing back a stored graph with audio. So again, I have my 10 spaces here. And notice the first one was recorded with no audio file, that our example. Uh, but if I search back through here, 
I can find some that do have audio. And here's one called Survivor. And I uh, called that because of that's when it was recorded. Notice there's a 15 megabyte audio file. I'm going to go ahead and recall this. Uh, 605 data points, which is equal to 605 seconds, and it says when it was recorded. Flip it over. Now I can push play, and you can hear the uh, television show that was playing. And notice the cursor has started to move across the screen, showing exactly where we are. And that is a live cursor, and we can move it. I'm going to let it run over that little peak there see what was happening and then I'll show how we can pretty easily manipulate this yeah. well, somebody made a sound in there and now I can take the cursor and drag it around here and essentially scrub the audio in real time let's hear what was happening in this peak it looks like somebody's making popcorn there People yelling. Okay, so you get the idea. With the cursor, we can scroll to any point in the graph, hit play, and hear what was going on at that exact time. So that feature is very useful to understand what was happening at a peak of audio. And remember, we can zoom into that time as well and really get a fine view of it. So that's a look at the SPL Graph app by Studio 6 Digital, which is available for iPhone, iPod Touch second generation, and is on the iTunes App Store.